Hello everybody, welcome back. My name is Noah Aloha. We are playing Arkham Horror the card game. We are in video 5 now, gosh, uh, in chapter 2. Second video for chapter 2, The Midnight Masks. Let's jump to the table. We are skulking around in Arkham. <laughs> I guess we're not skulking uh, so much as we are sprinting around Arkham, tearing through the streets, um, searching for some cultists. Um, we are currently in Southside, both investigators, Wendy and Roland. Oh, there's something I wanted to add into the, uh, onto the space. I mentioned these in the previous video, but I never actually got around to it. Um, let's take a look at Southside. As you can see on the ability that it allows you to take there, search your deck for an ally asset. It has limit once per game in parentheses. That is a limit per player as limits default to. Uh, were it a group limit that you could only apply once per game and that's it. For all investigators it would say group limit once per game. As it is, this is a per investigator limit and that's what these tokens are going to represent. If you recall at the end of the previous video, Wendy used this ability so that she could uh, tutor up her Leo card. So we shall get rid of hers. She has used this, she cannot do it again. And Roland still uh, is able to take the benefit of the Mars boarding house ability. We are at the start of a new turn, so we have a mythos phase to go through. Let's get through that and then we can see what happens and discuss where we go from there. Uh, so, we're going to wait for this to fade away, there we go. Let's tick up Doom, we're up to four. It's close, that is close scarily close. When you have these acolytes in the deck, they can pop up. Luckily we have two of them already. I don't actually know whether there are three acolytes or four in here. I'm not sure. I should actually know that. That was imp That's good information to kind of have in your head when you're playing through this scenario. Um, but let's, uh, before we do anything, let's go around, shuffle everything, shuffle the cultist deck, shuffle our player decks. Right then, let's draw some encounter cards. Roland has false lead. Ooh, ouch. Let's jump down, see what false lead is. So, revelation. If you have no clues, false lead gains surge. Surge is a encounter card ability whereby it replaces itself if it cannot have its negative impact. If it can't have any fun with you, then it's going to let one of its friends have fun with you instead. Um, it's an if qualifier, though. Uh, we do have at least one clue. If you have one or more clues, test intellect, difficulty four, and for each point you fail by, place one of your clues on your location. So, the clue that we just gained, um, we may have to drop. Um, did I finish <laughs> describing what surge is? Essentially, if a card has surge on it, if an encounter card has surge on it, if it cannot have some kind of impact, then you discard it and draw a new encounter card. That is what Surge is. I'd rather not drop this. It's a difficult uh, check. We have Intellect 3, so we would need plus 1 at this point to pass it. Hmm. The location itself isn't difficult shroud necessarily. It's kind of in the middle-ish. We're going to kill this Acolyte. We're going to gain, say, this clue. Perhaps it just means that we have to spend another investigation on this location um, because we can't lose more than one. So in this situation, I think I will hold on to my cards. I could throw Perception at this and that'd be worthwhile. Maybe simply because we're getting so many cards into our hand, it might make sense to actually... Well, <laughs> Perception would just replace itself anyway. Um, we don't want to get rid of flashlight. No. Would we throw this at it? I'm feeling like we perhaps shouldn't. No, we're just going to take the check and maybe have a problem grabbing another clue. Yeah, let's just do that. We'll go for... I do this a lot, and I apologize, but I'm going to go back on everything I just said, and I'm going to play Perception. Uh, the reason being, at the moment we are at 
minus, we're at plus one for a success, which basically means that we need either the elder sign token for the plus two or the plus one token. And um, because the current skill, uh, not skill, the current skull icon it corresponds to a minus one, um, minus, there's a lot of minus ones in the deck, in the, in the chaos bag that would allow us to succeed. I think it makes sense at this point, whilst there's only one doom token on any given cultist, I think it just makes sense to use perception in this instance. We've got it in our hand, let's, let's try and keep hold of our clue. So we're going to commit perception to this intellect test. And we now have a modified value of 5, so minus 1 or better in this situation. That's no good. Minus 3, and if we fail, place one of your clues on your location. So at least we didn't have to really suffer uh, the effect of the broken runestone, but that's very much a failure. We lose our perception, and our clue goes back to the location. Move these over here, out of the way. We can put this back, and Wendy will draw into On Wings of Darkness. Uh, this is an agility test. I think I mentioned this in the previous video. Uh, this is the agility test that I was very reluctant for Roland to uh, face and to suffer the effects of. We're going to test agility, and we have uh, an interesting little um, if-then kind of uh, piece of rules on the card. If you fail, take one damage and one horror. Then disengage from each non-Night God enemy, engage with you, and move to a central location. This isn't necessarily the best card as an example for the then word. Um, then has a specific way of being treated in the rules. For the, you need to split it up into everything before then and then everything after then, the word then. For everything after the word then to be applied to the game state, everything preceding the then <laughs> needs to happen. So we would have to fail, A, we would have to take one damage, B, and we would have to take one horror, C. If any of those three things do not occur, for whatever reason, you don't have to process everything that happens after the then. There's nothing we can actually do to mitigate taking one damage and one horror, but say there was, I don't think one exists in the game, say there was an ability where you were immune to damage for a single turn, and it was still in play, and this popped up, you would avoid taking the one damage and that would stop the post then effect from um, occurring. I, I, I can't think of a good example, um, but hopefully that just gives you an idea of how to treat that word then. There is an entry for it in the rules reference, take a look at it. Um, getting back to Wendy's personal problems that she has right now, do we throw anything at this? What would happen? I mean, I don't necessarily want Wendy to move back here. I think she has some good that she could do here with these clues. However, uh, I mean, the main thing for Wendy to come down to Southside was so she could grab her Leo. We could just treat this as a couple of pings of damage. I think we... Yeah, okay. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Oh, did we grab our Leo? We did get Leo. Okay, so we do have Leo in our hand. Excellent. Uh, the reason I say that is if we take the damage, we can ping the Stray Cat for one damage, get rid of it, because we are going to be discarding Stray Cat anyway when we equip Leo. I'm not going to throw anything at this. We're just going to see what happens, um, and we'll deal with it. Uh, so let's test Agility 4 versus Difficulty 4. Zero or better, please. Skull tokens will be minus one at this point, so they would constitute a fail. Speaking of which, that is a minus one, and it is a fail. So we do take one horror, but I'm going to apply the one damage. It's not direct damage, no. I'm going to apply the one damage to Stray Cat, which goes into our discard, but it's not a problem because it was going to disappear anyway when we equipped Leo. Uh, we would disengage from any non Night Gaunt enemies here, and we move to move to a central location. Of all these location cards, this is the only one that has the central trait written directly in the center of the card there. So that's where we move to. So then, 
Uh, that was Wings of Darkness, is it called? On Wings of Darkness. Right. What are we going to do now? Um, it's Trixie. Not sure. I mean, Roland's turn is pretty much on autoplay, I think. I think the way we handle Roland's turn is we click to kill the Acolyte. We click a second time to find an ally using this. And then perhaps we click a third time to equip that ally. I'm thinking Beat Cop, because um, it's a nice way of getting rid of these one health enemies. So sure, uh, we'll do that for Roland. Mm, what I would love is if he had, say, um, evidence in his hand so he could get two clues here. But he doesn't, so I don't even know why I mentioned that. First action for Roland will be to hack away at this acolyte with his machete, as gruesome as that sounds. And it is difficulty 3 with modified combat of 4, so we want minus 2 or better. That is a 0, which is a success. We can... Let's see, what's the order of play here? Let's return the card to the discard. Let's delete this Doom token, which brings this down to three. And we defeated an enemy at our location, so we can gain a clue. Second action, yep, I think we use the Mars Boarding House ability to search through our deck for Beat Cop or Dr. Milan. Hmm. Speed Cop or Dr. Milan? I think given the flipping of the agenda that will happen within a turn or two, well, maybe a little bit longer if we're lucky, I think Beat Cop makes more sense. As constantly important as... Where are you? Where are you? Dr. Milan, where are you? Where are you? Where are you? I don't see him. He must be in here somewhere. don't actually see Doc. Is he in my hand? No. Where are you, Dr. Milan? I think I'm going insane. I cannot see. There you are. Gosh. Uh, Dr. Milan there. As important as that plus one investigate is, and after you successfully investigate, gain a resource, it's a really good card. Gosh, it's good. However, the new ability on our new and improved Beat Cop. Where are you, Beat Cop? There you are. Just being able to, as a free action, exhaust Beat Cop and deal one damage, it's just a very, very sweet, tasty way <laughs> to uh, handle these one health acolytes. Uh, so I think we're going to go Beat Cop. I don't know why I typed A in there. So, sure, let me add that to our hand. Yeah, I think that's right. And then as a third action, um, because we're going to move into the hospital next turn, and deal with this acolyte, I believe we will just pay the action, as I did, for resources, and get Beat Cop out there. Sure. Yeah. Wendy is now in a funny situation where we know that Roland probably has to go and handle this. No, actually. Roland's turn on his next turn could be investigate, investigate move and then use beat cop as a free action to kill the acolyte so he can assuming there's no ugliness that occurs here during the encounter phase he could in theory grab these clues and kill the acolyte next turn gaining a clue in the process i think we do that then but in that case where does wendy go we're in no position to spawn a cultist currently maybe wendy well, Wendy wants to handle her Leo, doesn't she? I should do that first. That makes better sense. Yeah. First action. Wendy is going to play Leo. Get rid of five resources. Whoops. Don't know what happened there. Behave. We can gain a fourth action. And then... Hmm, hmm, hmm. Yeah, let's, let's try and grab these clues. And then we could, in theory, grab a clue, grab a clue, and then spawn a cultist. 
just so that we know what to do going into the next set of investigations. Yeah, let's try that. Investigate for shroud value 1 with intellect of 3, so minus 2 or better. That is a success. And then before going back, I will just do the same thing again for our third action. That is also a success. <laughs> so we grab both clues with two investigate actions. And we are now in a position where we have one, two, three, four clues. So let me just make sure I counted them correctly. That was Wendy started in the... Uh, she hasn't moved. She started in Rivertown. This was equipping Leo. And then this was two investigations. Yeah. And I think, yeah, I'm going to spend our last action. I'm going to spend four clues. And we are going to go up to our act. Here there is an action we can take, indicated by the arrow. The investigators spend two clues per investigator as a group. Draw the top card of the cultist deck. So, what are we hoping for here? I will tell you right now what I'm hoping for is a cultist that spawns in the graveyard. Um, Wendy, the, the graveyard belongs to Wendy, as far as I'm concerned right now. However, what I would like to avoid is for Wendy to head into the graveyard, do her business grabbing clues, leave the graveyard and go help out Roland, and then for the cultist to spawn in, the, the specific cultist to spawn in here, so that you have to backtrack and go back there. That's just part and parcel of this scenario, though. Um, Wendy is better equipped for the graveyard. It requires a bit of a test before we move in there, and there's a, a possible penalty to that test that involves losing sanity, uh, which isn't so great for Roland. All things considered, well, all things considered, let's draw a cultist and see what we then have to consider. Who do we have? We have Victoria Devereaux, so no uh, grave, is it grave robber or grave digger or undertaker? I'm not sure. It's not that one anyway. We have Victoria Devereaux, 3-3-2, um, three, three, so 3 health, not too strong, you know, just a regular uh, kind of enemy enemy, and it spawns in north side. Let's put her over there and then we'll take a look at some of that text. You can see that she has a special ability which we can do um, when you're at the same location. Spend five resources and parley. So this action, because it has parley type, um, would not incur any attacks of opportunity. As long as we have spent those five resources, we can then add Victoria Devereaux to the victory display. We take another look at the act here. The objective is to find as many unique cultist enemies as we can and put them in the victory display. As you can see, there is one way to put the enemy in the victory display. Several of these cultists have these options written on the cards that allow that. That is not the only way to add an enemy to the victory display. Um, this might be obvious to a lot of you, um, but I've seen some people asking questions. Um, it's just one of those things that perhaps is a little un unintuitive. Um, any enemy with a victory point value on it, so the the ghoul priest, for example, the icy ghoul that we meet in the cellar of chapter one. They all have victory points on them. When you defeat them by purely normal means, just by reducing their health down to zero, you apply fatal damage. You do not put them in the discard of the encounter. If they have a victory point on them, they go in the victory pile. So you have, for the most part, two options of getting these cultists over here. You either defeat them, or if they have special text, you're able to do it that way. Um, so, I shouldn't put her over there yet. That's very, very, very uh, forward of me. I apologize. Uh, for Victoria Devereaux, she... I don't think we'll spend five resources. She's not statted very high, and I think this is something that Roland can handle with his machete. Um, plus, he would gain the benefit of gaining a clue. If he, if, he, if he adds a card to the victory pile through violence, <laughs> that is classed as defeating it. Um, were Roland to come over here and spend five resources, that is not classed as defeating it. He wouldn't be able to grab a clue or trigger any of the if you defeat an enemy type situations. So, with Victoria spawning, I, for reasons that I just kind of went into, I don't think Wendy heads over there to deal with her. I think that is a Roland card. 
Roland can get over there. He's heading in this direction. I think he will just be able to swing around. I think at this point... I don't know with Wendy. I think at this point I throw her at the graveyard. And I, I treat the graveyard as just a relatively easy source of four clues. We'll see what happens in the mythos phase, shall we? That's probably for the best. There's all of our actions. Um, enough talking. Let's start moving forward. There are no enemies that are going to do anything right now. So we can go straight into upkeep. Roland will draw. Okay. There's our new card, extra ammunition. I don't know why I sounded so excited there. Totally useless right now. <laughs> we don't have any firearms. Um, we don't have any firearms in our hand, let alone equipped. But still, ooh, new card. And we gain a resource. Move over to Wendy. Wendy will draw into... Survival Instinct. Yeah, can't say I'm excited to see this. Um, right, let's see what the encounter phase, the mythos phase does for us. And um, we'll make some decisions. I am very torn on where to send Wendy right now. I would like her over here to do that, but I also... I want her to be able to help out once Roland... I'm guessing Roland will probably, probably be around here. Again, I'm kind of just guessing what's going to happen in the future. Let's just move forward and see what happens in the future, shall we? Let us pip up Doom and draw a card for Roland. Roland has another Hunting Shadow. Okay, uh, Peril, you must either spend a clue or take two damage. We do not have any clues to spend, so he takes the damage. No options there. I am not too concerned, uh, which you'll, if you don't already know why I'm not concerned, you will hopefully find out next turn. And Wendy draws into another Acolyte. Right. This is wonderful. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Um, it's not excellent. Oy, 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 oy. Right, the reason why this is excellent, I don't want Wendy dealing with these. She's not equipped with any weapons. Um, this is clue fodder for Roland and his beat cop. I'm going to place it up here because as we just... We can't place it here because it has to be an empty location. We can't place it here because it has to be an empty location. But we know that Roland is heading in this direction. So let's put the Acolyte here. And tick up Doom. So we are now one away from here. Ooh, scary, 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 scary. Um, right then, that is our encounter phase. So with this popping up now, no, I think we can handle it. Yeah, we can handle it. There's nothing that can happen between now and the next time we check. Because this is going to die, so this is going to go down to four. Yeah, we're okay. We don't have to rush over here and deal with this yet. We have another turn. So, Roland will try to grab two clues from here. Yeah, that's going to be his first two actions. First action, investigate. Uh, he doesn't have anything that bumps his investigation up, so it's just minus one or better. That is a pass. Gain a clue. Second action, same again. That is a minus one. There is no ghoul enemy. There is no cultist enemy on the board that has two doom right now. Uh, they all have just one. So that is minus one. So we are successful, and we gain this clue. Third action, Roland will move into Miskatonic. No, Saint Mary's Hospital. I apologise. Let's read the the text. Arkham's only hospital. Saint Mary's has a twenty-four hour receiving room and is busy at all hours of the night. Dr. Mortimer and Nurse Sharon have been particularly stressed lately, thanks in part to recent events. Let's flip it. It has shroud value 2, it's going to have two clues on there, and it has an action. Once per game, for each investigator, heal 3 damage. So that's why I wasn't hugely concerned for going up to 5 here. Let's throw some clues on here. One of which is 
imminently going into our pile. So we've processed moving into the uh, new location, or rather we have now processed moving into the new location, and we have still just taken our third action. We have a player window here for free triggers before Roland passes it over to Wendy, and we can exhaust Beat Cop during that window. We deal one damage to Beat Cop, and we deal one damage to an enemy at our location. We can return the Acolyte to the discard, we can get rid of this Doom, this goes back down to four, and we can gain a clue for defeating an enemy. So that was nice. It worked out quite well. I probably will not... We'll see, we'll see, we'll see, we'll see, we'll see, we'll see. I might actually, I probably will. <laughs> I think we will actually grab that clue, that's, uh, that's fine. So we're up to three clues now here over there, uh, thanks to Roland. That was a very, very productive turn for him. Wendy is in a curious position now where... How many cards do we have? We have enough, actually. Yes, we do have enough. I think Wendy... Wendy. I think Wendy is going to go over here. We're doing it. Action one. She is going to walk along the old wooded path. We're going to head to the graveyard. Read some text. The graveyard lies at the foot of French Hill. Some of the headstones date back to the 17th century when the earliest colonists came to Arkham. Considering what happened in your house, you're not completely keen on heading there. She's a brave girl. So, we have... Um, well, let's let's populate it with what it needs, first of all. It's going to have four clues, with only a shroud value of one. A delight in terms of finding clues, but it has a few problems. You will also note, before we jump into the force text, it does have a victory point here. If we can get, if we can, um, get all of these four clues at the end of the scenario, we will score a victory point each. But it has this force text. After you enter the graveyard, test Willpower Difficulty 3, and if we fail, we either take to Horror or we move to Rivertown. So we either just scare ourselves so much that we take some mental damage, or we go and run straight all the way back. I think, even if we fail this, I think I might just take the Sanity damage. Throw one on Leo just because I want to get these super fast, and it's not a difficult place. We get the victory point, and then I can hopefully hurry back to here, where Roland will be messing around. That's the, that's the plan at this point. So we used an action to move in. We need to make a willpower test. Do I commit anything to this? I could bump it by two, using cunning distraction. I have willpower four versus difficulty three. Maybe, because I don't, I don't consider this a card that I'm going to use. Yeah, why not? Why not? Um, we'll put it here whilst we are conducting the skill check, and then we can place it in the discard after the skill check is concluded. So, modified willpower of six versus difficulty three. That is a pass. In our event discard, so it's, it's all classed as the same discard pile, but this is just my event side, so I know what's topmost. Right then, so we are successfully in the graveyard, and we can now get to clue snaffling. Uh, so let's just, let's do it. I was going to say let's just do all three, but there are times where if you draw, say, the cultist, you need to move over and, and do stuff. And with Wendy's special ability, Let's just do it one at a time. So, first investigation, intellect of three versus difficulty one, minus two or better. That is a plus one. Oh, actually, of course, there's a, there's a very good reason why I wouldn't do all three at once here. We've just grabbed a clue for our second action. We now have four clues. Wendy is going to spend her third action drawing from the cultist deck. What do we draw? What do we draw? This would be amazing if this was the cultist that spawns at the graveyard. It is not. Ruth Turner, the mortician. 
She spawns at St. Mary's Hospital and forced, after Ruth Turner is evaded, add her to the victory display. So this is over in Roland's neck of the woods, so to speak, and he is not an evasion monster. She does have two damage. Um, is we at the hospital? So it actually spawns at the hospital and it's in Roland's face. Or she's in Roland's face. <laughs> Let's be nice. Um, so that's actually fairly great. Could theoretically spend two actions attacking it. That would kill it. Then we'd have a third action. We could move into the university and again ping down for one. Okay, okay, okay. We like that. We like that a lot. Uh, Wendy still has one action left. So let's make another attempt at grabbing a clue. Minus three is a fail. Do we discard? Mm. Yes, we do. We're going to discard this. Yes, we're going to discard that. And we're going to repull that token. That is a success. So, we get our clue. That was the final action. Okay, everybody's finished. There are... Sadly, Roland is going to take an opportunity... Not an opportunity attack. Um, he's going to take an attack in the enemy phase from Ruth Turner. That's going to deal one damage to him. Did I? Did I? Did I? Did I? I'm trying to remember how this worked during the previous turn. Did I heal the three damage that I said I was going to heal? What was Roland's turn? I moved in. I was here. I snaffle snaffled. No, 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 I did not. Gosh. Yeah, I'm, I'm, very, I'm, I'm silly. Um, I grabbed two clues on Roland's previous turn, moved in here, and killed the Acolyte. So yes, that's three actions. <laughs> I, got, I was really scared I hadn't uh, healed myself for actual... I'd spent the action on the uh, location, but I hadn't done that part. So, no, no problem. We're still on top of things, I hope. Um, nothing else we need to do. That was the enemy phase. Roland took some damage. I won't apply the damage to the B-Cop, because his... Pinging ability is so useful. I'll just soak it up and hopefully heal it back. Uh, we might we might be in a problem where we can't deal with this cultist, though. I think if choosing between killing this cultist next turn and Roland using the hospital to heal up, I think healing up is more important right now. Yeah, I hadn't accounted for the attack that this does in the enemy phase. Sad, but oh well. Enemy phase complete, we are in upkeep, and nothing, apart from this, nothing needs to be exhausted except for the card that needs to be unexhausted. And we can go into the card draw part of proceedings. We draw into our shotgun. Aha! So this is a nice, oh, this is working out uh, wonderfully, actually. We're in a good spot right now. We're in a good spot. Um, There is a nasty enemy looming and we are now in a oh wait <laughs> maybe we're not in such a good situation yeah that is a problem actually hmm we can play around that i have something i want to think about doing before we handle that we want roland to get this shotgun out it's kind of very important actually um with that said Let's give ourselves one of those. And Wendy will draw into... Ooh, guts! Okay, sure. Nice to have. I would prefer to be drawing into something that deals damage around about now. A backstab, a sneak attack, something like that. We gain our resource. That is the end of the turn. I'm going to put a cut in here. And we will come back. Uh, Roland has a very busy couple of turns ahead of him. Lots of things that he... Needs to take care of. And Wendy's just chilling in the graveyard. Um, hmm. I think... I think we might be okay, though. I have something that we can do. And it involves Wendy having the most clues. Thank you for watching. 
I uh, trust I will see you in the next video. I hope to, I look forward to seeing you there, etc, etc. Take care. Bye-bye.